Today we're gonna to show you everything you need to know about blending modes in Photoshop. Hello and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're talking blending modes. Now this is fantastic when you want two images to blend together. Maybe you just want the light areas to show up. Maybe you just want the dark areas to show up or maybe you wanna bring in those colors. Blending modes are gonna help you do all of it. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and show you how it's done. So we're starting off with our background image. The first thing we're gonna do is import a new photograph. So I'm gonna go right here into our finder and we're just gonna go into this moon.jpg. I'm gonna click and drag this right into our image and hit enter. Now with this moon, I don't want the black background to be visible. I just want this lighter area to be visible and I can do that with blending modes. So first off, let's go ahead and find our blending modes. You can get to them in two different ways. You can simply click right here where it says normal and you're gonna have a drop down with a bunch of different blending modes. And you can see, I can simply hover over them and see how they blend in with my image. The other way to get to this is by double clicking right here on your layer. You're gonna get to your layer style and here you have your blend modes and it's the exact same list and you can simply scroll through this list. Now, I know this is a lot of different blending modes. Don't worry about memorizing them all. They're actually divided up into groups. So let's go ahead and talk about the different groups. For that, let's go ahead and click where it says normal. I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom and then click here again, just so we can see everything. Now we have our normal group. This is just gonna show up exactly like you would think. It's gonna show up as a normal layer. Dissolve is gonna blend the edges a little bit. We really don't use Dissolve almost at all in Photoshop. Okay, next we have our darkened group. Everything in this darkened group is going to show just the dark parts of this layer. For instance, if I go to darken, you're gonna be able to start to see through the moon just a little bit to the background. Multiply, similar effect. Color burn, linear burn, and darker colors. You can see all of these are making the dark parts of the moon visible, or of our moon photograph rather, the dark parts of our moon photograph visible and the light parts invisible, okay? Next we have our lighten group and this is gonna do the opposite. It's gonna make the light areas visible and the dark areas invisible, okay? It's going to use different equations to show how this is all gonna be blending together, but that's basically the idea. Now with these different groups, another great tip that I have for you is they kinda of go in order for what you use common to least common, for instance, here in the darken group, darken and multiplier, these are the two most commonly used ones. We really don't use color burn, linear burn, or darker color that much. In the lighten group, lighten and the screen, these are gonna be the most common, and color dodge, linear dodge, and lighter color, again, we really don't use that much. Next, we have our overlay group. This is gonna kinda blend in the highlights, shadows, and the colors. Overlay and soft light, these are used pretty commonly. We don't really use hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light, or hard mix nearly as much. As you can see, the effect is a lot stronger. But if you want to do some coloring, overlay and soft light are fantastic. Next, we have our difference, exclusion, subtract, and divide. These are kind of like for special effects or if you want to just get really something funky. Honestly, this list really isn't used that much. As you can see, like maybe you would want like this type of effect if I go to difference. Maybe you would want this on, like if you were trying to like create an interesting color effect for a background, but in the everyday usage of photo editing, this group isn't used very much. Next, we have our hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. This will actually take either the hue, saturation, color, or luminosity of this layer and affect the background layers. And this is mainly for changing colors. We're gonna show you how to do that in just a little bit. So for now, what I wanna do is I wanna make our moon visible and I wanna make the background invisible. We don't need to use a layer mask, we can use blending modes. So we're gonna use our lighten or screen blend mode. Let's go ahead and click on screen. And here you can see the black is completely invisible, the light is visible. We're gonna just simply move this up and there we have our moon perfectly blended in with this photograph. All we had to do was change the blending mode to screen. So now I'm gonna bring you to the next tip or general piece of advice. If you're trying to figure out which blending mode to use, you don't necessarily need to know ahead of time. A lot of the time you can just flip through your blending modes and decide from there what works best. This is an area you can play around. Now there are two great ways to flip through your blending modes. The first way is to simply click here on the blending modes and just use your cursor to go down through blending modes and see which one is actually working, okay? The next way to do it is with keyboard shortcuts, and this is my personal favorite way to do that. 
First, you're going to hit V on your keyboard, which is going to bring you to the Move tool, okay? The Move tool, and then we're going to hold Shift plus or minus on our keyboard, and that's going to flip between them. You can see right over here, Shift plus or minus is going to just simply move through all of your different blending modes on your layer. You have to hit V on your keyboard first, which goes to the Move tool, and then Shift plus or minus. So sometimes, let's say you're in normal, and you're like, oh, I remember there was one where it made the moon visible, but the background invisible. I don't remember what it was called. That's okay. Hit V on your keyboard first to go to the move tool, and then hold shift, and then plus. And as you keep hitting plus, it's just going to cycle through them, and eventually you'll be, oh, cool, that looks good. And as you can see, that's set to screen. So you don't have to know exactly what all these do, because you can change them at any time. All right. Now let's go ahead and bring in another image, and for this I want to do the opposite. I want the dark areas to be visible and the light areas to be invisible. So here what we're going to do, let's go to our finder window. We have this image of a crow. We're going to click and drag it just like this. In this case, we're going to go hit Ctrl or Command T to transform. Let's go ahead and scale this crow up and bring the crow right down there. In this case, I want the crow to be visible, I want the building to be visible, but I want this background to be invisible, okay? So what we're gonna do is use our blending modes. Again, we can just go from here. I could choose something like darken or multiply. These look great. Or if I didn't know what I want, hit V on your keyboard, shift and hit plus a couple times until you get what you want. And there we go. We have this cool, cool crow image. Now here you can see one thing that we're gonna talk about. With this crow image, okay, you can see, yes, the crow is visible, the building's visible there, we got a cool image look going on, but as you can see, still some of this area is visible here in the background. Let's go ahead and put this back to a normal blending mode. The reason why this area is visible is because it's not pure white in my sample image, and when I go to multiply, basically it's going to show up the darker areas, and the crow and this building are very dark, but this has a little bit of a dark area in it as well. So if I want this area to disappear, all I have to do is use levels and make that area lighter and it's gonna disappear. So keep in mind, with this multiply blend mode, dark areas are gonna be visible, light areas are gonna be invisible. So if I want them to be more invisible, I just have to make them lighter. Okay, so let's go ahead and click here on our layer. I'm gonna hit Control or Command L for our levels. Now with our levels, I can simply take my slider on the right hand side here, which is just my white point, and I can drag that from the right to the left, and there we go. The whites are invisible. I can also go right here to my white point and click on my image, boop, and do that, and you can see, perfect, it simply made the light areas lighter, and now they're completely invisible. So here I have this kind of interesting composite going down where I have the crow and the background and the moon. Of course I can move this stuff at any time, I can change the size of it, I can change a blending mode at any time, but you can see I didn't use any layer masks, I didn't cut anything out, we're simply using blending modes to bring all this together. Now what happens if we want to bring some color into our photograph? Well, we can do that. Let's go up here to layer, we're going to go to a new fill layer, and I'm going to go to solid color. Fantastic. Now with the solid color, let's just go ahead and give it a color, we can change this at any time, and I'm going to bring that to the very top, so we have a solid color fill layer. Now here where it says normal, let's go ahead and try our overlay or soft light. There we go, soft light. You can see now it's kind of bringing in that color into the image. I can double click right over here and change this color at any time. So if I decide I want some interesting coloring in my photograph, I can do that simply by adding a solid color fill layer and setting this to soft light. As you can see, if I put this back to normal, it's literally just a solid color, changing this from normal back to soft light. There we go, and you can see this affects our image. Now, I can also go all the way down here and affect the hue. I could bring in the saturation. I could make this all the exact same color, or I can change this to luminosity, in which we would see it's basically all the same light levels. I'm just seeing hue and saturation through that. So these are really great ways to like completely color your image, but if you wanna do something subtle, a little bit more artistic, then I recommend either overlay or soft light to get that effect. And look at this. How amazing is this? We've gone from this image, added our moon, and you can see the moon has a screen blend mode. We added our crow. The crow has a, let's click on that layer, multiply blend mode, and we use our levels to just make the light areas a little bit lighter. Then we added our color fill, set to soft light, 
and we've completely changed the tone of this image, created an interesting artistic composite with just blending modes. So the next time you want to blend two images together, be sure to check out your blending modes. Again, the keyboard shortcuts here, you can simply click here on the blending modes. You can use your up and down arrow to scroll through them if you want to do that, or you can just make sure to hit V on your keyboard to go to your move tool, then shift plus and minus, and that's gonna allow you to scroll through your different blending modes. Ooh, that one looks cool. That's a case where we want something a little artistic. And don't forget, you could always lower your opacity if you wanted to get something kinda in the middle. There we go. Have fun with them. They're a great way to create artistic images in Photoshop. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a big thumbs up if you did, and let me know in a comment right down below what you would like to learn next. And if you wanna learn even more advanced Photoshop knowledge, check out Flurn Pro. We've compiled 10 years of tutorials for you, and we have an exclusive discount for you right down below. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye, everyone.